Hello, and welcome. I am Exit Light, and this is my channel. Today I'm going to walk you through a murder that was supposed to be inspired by a movie. As long as there's been movies and violence in them, there has always been blame for violence on movies. Eventually, also video games. So I'm going to walk you through this murder where the two killers actually did aspire to recreate a movie and make one of their own. Before I get started, if you would please press that like button. It helps my videos. It helps them to be seen. That helps my channel grow. If you would be so kind as to subscribe, I would appreciate that. And let's get started, shall we? In 2006, a 16-year-old girl was murdered. Her name was Kathy Jo Stoddart. She was murdered by two male teens. And they claimed that the movie Scream inspired them to kill their friend. Their names were Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik, and they were also both 16. And they attended Pocatello High School with Cassie Jo. Ultimately, what happened was the teen boys entered the home that Cassie Jo was house sitting and stabbed her approximately 30 times. Investigators discovered Draper at Adam Chick had recorded a video of their plan to murder Cassie Jo as the teens boasted that they were cinematographers and movie makers. At the trial, Adam Chick alleged that the popular 1996 film Scream cemented their idea that they were going to kill somebody. While it is true there are other accounts of teenagers who kill their friends, the motives for these murders vary wildly. Sometimes there's really no apparent reason for the murders, such as the case of Skylar and Nice. In other instances, the teens kill out of alleged jealousy or even sometimes bigotry, such as the murder of Shonda Scherer. In this particular case, there was a clear motive. The boys talked about it on film that they filmed of themselves. They decided to kill Cassie Jo to become famous and to gain notoriety. Cassie Joe's uncle, Frank, who owned the home that Cassie was house-sitting that night, described her as being a really good girl. He said she didn't drink, she didn't use drugs, she was a straight-A student, and she was so responsible that they trusted her enough to let her watch their house. And they had no worries about that. She was also their babysitter for their young son. In fact, it was Cassie's beloved 13-year-old cousin who found her body on the evening that they got home. Police believed that Cassie had been killed on a Friday night and the family got home on a Sunday night. Prior to killing Cassie Jo, the high school juniors Brian Draper and Tori Adamchick filmed themselves discussing their murder. Portions of the video exist online, including footage of Adamchick saying there should be no laws against killing people. Later in the video, he mentions how he's horny just thinking about killing Cassie Jo. The teens reportedly likened themselves to Ted Bundy, to the Zodiac Killer, and the Hillside Strangler. Draper and Adamchick, who proclaimed 
a passion for film, produced multiple incriminating videos regarding this murder of Cassie Jo. And in 2017, the Supreme Court released the transcripts of these videos. Here, I'm going to give you some information that was released by the courts on or around August 31st, 2006, 18-year-old Joe Lucero received a call from Tori Adamchek asking if he would buy some knives for him. Together, Adamchik and Lucero went with Draper to a local pawn shop to buy knives. On the way there, they stopped at an ATM so that Draper could withdraw money, and of the 45 paid for the knives, Draper contributed $40. Adam Schick pointed out one knife and Draper selected three others. It was at about this time that Draper and Adam Schick had begun videotaping snippets of themselves talking about killing. This videotape was later recovered with other evidence used in the murder and at trial. And these are some of the transcripts of those quotes. Draper says, we are going for a high death count, Adam Chick says, plus we're not going to not get caught, Brian. If we're going for guns, we're just going to end it. We're just going to grab the guns and we're going to get out of there and we're going to kill everybody and leave. Draper, we're going to make history. We're going to make history, Adam Chick. For all you FBI agents out there watching this, Draper laughs. Adam Chick, uh, you weren't quick enough. Then he begins to laugh. Draper, you weren't quick enough and you weren't smart enough. And we're going over to Jane Doe number one's house. We are going to snoop around over there and try to see if she's home alone or not. And if she's home alone, splat, she's dead. Adam Chick said. Don't put your humor into this, Brian. Draper, uh, I'm not putting any humor into it. Yep, people will die, and memories will fade. Adam Schick, memories will fade. Hmm. I wonder what movie you got that from, Brian. Draper, myself. Adam Schick laughed. Draper, that was for myself. Adam Chick, no wonder it was so lame. Draper, okay, we're on our way, and I'm gonna, I'll let you stay tuned. We're almost there. Um, September 21st, 2006, at 8.08 p.m., Adam Chick and Draper were sitting in their car. Draper is filming Adam Chick with the camera's light on. Draper says, we are at, uh, there's a Jane Doe, his house. It's clear out there in the pasture. We've already snooped around the house a couple of times. Uh, she's not home at all, so we're going to go to that church over there, and we're going to call a girl and a guy named Cassie and Matt. They're our friends. Our friends. But we have to make sacrifices. So um, I feel tonight, it is the night, and I feel really weird and stuff. I feel like I want to kill somebody. Uh... I know that's not normal, but what the hell? Adam Chick says, I feel we need to break away from the normal life. Draper, how bright is this light? Adam Chick, because let's put it this way. Parents, along with their parents, along with their parents, and so on. Draper, uh-huh. Adam Chick, taught them about God, Jesus, the whole bullshit. Draper begins laughing. Adam Chick, line. I'm sure you guys believe in God as well. I realized when I was in the seventh grade, along with you don't believe in Santa Claus, or Draper starts laughing. Adam Chick, vampires or werewolves. They're used as a metaphor. Not to let... They teach their kids back in the 1800s. I learned this in English class. About telling their kids that they can't go outside, or a vampire will get you, just to make their kids stay and do what they want. So God is basically Draper. That's what God's for, right? Adam Chick, yep, the same way. 
Draper, yep. Then at 8.15 p.m., Adam Chick and Draper are still in the car. Adam Chick is driving, and Draper is filming the from the passenger seat. Draper says, now we're going to go over to Cassie and Matt's. This is Matt Beckham, her boyfriend. If they're home, we're going to... Adam Chick says, it's Cassie's house. Matt Beckham is there. Draper says, Matt Beckham is there? Sorry. We're going to... We're going to knock on the door. We'll see who is there. We'll see. We'll see. See if their parents are home or not. If they're home alone, we will leave our way. And then we will come back in about ten minutes. We'll sneak in through the door. Because chances are they're probably in Cassie's room. So we'll sneak in the front door. And we'll make a noise outside. Adam Chick says, and Matt will come out to investigate. Draper says, we'll kill him, and we'll scare the shit out of Cassie, okay? And Adam Chick says, sounds fun. Draper says, we'll stay tuned. This is the transcript at 8.36. Draper, we'll let you, and the lass, we'll find out if she has friends over if she's going to be alone in a big, dark house out in the middle of nowhere, then he laughs. How perfect can you get? I mean, like, holy shit, dude. Adam Chick says, I'm horny just thinking about it. Draper, hell yeah. So we're going to fucking kill her and her friends, and we're going to keep moving on. I heard some news about Jane Doe, number two. She's going to be home alone from six to seven, so we might kill her and drive over to Cassie's thing and scare the shit out of them. And kill them one by fucking one. Hell yeah. Adam Chick. Why one by one? Why can't it be a slaughterhouse? Draper. Two by two or three by three. Because we've got to keep it classy. Adam Chick says, keep it classy. Draper says, so yeah, it's going to be extra fun. Adam Chick says, you're evil. And he starts to laugh. Draper says, yes, I am. So are you, dude. Evil. Evil. On the night of her murder, Cassie Joe is house-sitting for her aunt and uncle, Allison and Frank Contreras, in their Whispering Hills home. Two of Cassie Joe's friends, Draper and Adam Chick, showed up to hang out with her and her boyfriend, Matt Beckham. Reportedly, they all started watching a movie before Draper and Adam Chick said they would rather watch a movie at a theater. The teens acted as though they had left. And shortly afterwards, the house's power went out. When Beckham went home for the evening, Draper and Adam Chick returned. Adam Chick later alleged to the police that he and Draper had stopped at the house for a party, which, as you might remember, they expected there to be a party and lots of people there. A slaughterhouse. When the party didn't happen... They immediately left to go to a movie theater. During the interview, Adam Chick was unable to identify which movie they allegedly had gone to see on the night of the murder. After Cassie Joe's boyfriend had left, Draper and Adam Chick re-entered the home wearing masks and turned off the power again. Reportedly, the two killers planned to wait in the basement for Cassie Joe. They were hoping that she would inadvertently play right into their slasher movie fantasy and walk downstairs to check on the breaker box. When Cassie Joe did not enter the basement, the two of them went upstairs to the living room. They then stabbed her 30 times with two knives. The autopsy later showed that approximately 12 of the stab wounds were fatal. And 11 of those 12 came from one knife. After the murder, Draper and Adam Chick left the Whispering Hills residence and continued to film their actions as they drove home. According to the transcripts of the tape, shortly after the murder, they went to purchase movie tickets in order to build their alibi. During the police interviews, the teens maintained that they returned to Adam Chick's house at approximately 11.30 p.m. and did not leave. 
Witnesses later contradicted their claim, as well as a timestamp on their video the teens had recorded for themselves after murdering Cassie Joe. In the car, Draper and Adamchik exchanged a brief recap of the events at approximately 11.31 p.m. Draper says, We just killed Cassie. We just left her house. This is not a fucking joke. Adam Chick said, I'm shaking. Draper, I stabbed her in the throat. I saw her lifeless body. It just disappeared, dude. I just killed Cassie. After Cassie's body was found, the police were called. And the Pocatello police spoke to Draper at Adam Chick. After interviewing Beckham, who had told the authorities that the two teens had come to the house that night. Three days later, they arrested Draper and Adam Schick. With consent, investigators searched Draper's room and found an empty knife sheaf. The next day, during a third interview, Draper alleged that he and Adam Schick returned to the Contreras residence to scare Cassie Jo, but Adam Schick stabbed her to death. Draper then led police to the clothes, weapons, and masks linked to the murders. By Thursday, September 28th, authorities arrested Draper and Adam Chick. Draper maintained that Adam Chick forced him into stabbing Cassie Joe, but the evidence in the videos contradicted his alleged innocence in the murder. Investigators could not ascertain Draper and Adam Chick's motive for killing Cassie Joe. The prosecution pointed towards a conversation from the video of the killers recorded leading up to the murder. And on September 21st, Draper and Adam Chick recorded themselves saying they were going to be just like Scream, except real life terms, before comparing themselves to famous serial killers. And then Adam Chick then referred to the Zodiac Killer and Ted Bundy as amateurs. The prosecution maintained that the teens murdered simply in an attempt to achieve fame in the same manner as the Columbine killers. The videos indicated Draper and Adam Chick planned to commit multiple murders. A psychological evaluation also indicated that the teens were of sound mind when they decided to execute the murder of their friend. In 2007, the courts convicted juveniles Draper and Adam Chick for first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. The teens received a sentence of life without the possibility of parole, but their attorneys filed an appeal with the U.S. Supreme Court citing that there was a lack of information concerning the way a minor's brain develops. Nine years later, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional for a minor to receive a sentence of life without parole no matter what crime they committed. However, in 2017, the Idaho Supreme Court ruled to uphold Adam Chick's fixed 30-year conviction and both teens' sentences. Currently, Draper and Adam Schick are in the Idaho State Correctional Institution. After the murder, Cassie's aunt and uncle tried to sell their home. They just couldn't live in there anymore. The Bannock County Sheriff's Office put the family up in a hotel for two weeks during the investigation, and Sheriff Lauren Nelson even helped cover the insurance deductible to start the cleanup process after the crime. The split-level house was given fresh new paint, new carpet, and a spacious living room that no one used. Frank's quoted as saying, we just never went back in there. The minimally furnished and tidy room has a feeling of emptiness, according to Frank. And he said that there was a sense of sadness that impacted his entire family. Allison lost her job and fell into a deep depression. Frank said that he had to pick up a second job because the medication alone was $300 a month. He said that the first two years were the worst. It was our dream home and it turned into a nightmare. Frank's stepdaughter suffered a breakdown after reportedly seeing Cassie's body in the house and then she attempted suicide. Frank said that each member of the family has had an unexplained encounter 
in the home, feeling as though it might be haunted. Frank said that he and Allison have put the house on the market every year since the murder, but so far they have had no offers. The house sits on two acres of land. You have to drive two and a half miles just to get to it. It features 1,600 square feet of family space. It has fenced pastures and a garage. Yet despite the house's amenities, Frank and Allison just wanted out. Frank was quoted as saying, We just went out, but we have to fulfill our obligation. Frank said, We're at the point that we will take what we owe, which was 138000 We just want to walk. But there is a stigma on this house. Yes, I suppose there is. Thank you for coming to my channel and for listening to this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not and you can be notified when my content goes live. And good night.